If these radical, vicious, racist prosecutors do anything wrong or illegal, I hope we are going to have in this country the biggest protest we have ever had in Washington, D.C., in New York, in Atlanta, and elsewhere, because our country and our elections are corrupt. In reality, they're not after me, they're after you. And I just happen to be the person that's in the way. That's what they're after. It's been going on for years. In January 2022, judges in Fulton County, Georgia, that's where Atlanta is, they granted District Attorney Fonnie Willis permission to impanel a special grand jury to investigate former President Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the state's 2020 election results. And so Trump singled her out. He singled out prosecutors in New York and D.C. as well, repeatedly calling them vicious and racist. Although he did not name them, he seemed, in that rally, to refer to Manhattan D.A. Alvin Bragg, New York Attorney General Letitia James, and former Washington, D.C. Attorney General Carl Racine, in addition to Fonnie Willis. Now, there are two things those folks all have in common. They are all prosecutors who were investigating Trump, and all of them are black. The remarks Trump made during that rally prompted Fulton County D.A. Willis to request additional security from the FBI's Atlanta office. And that was not the last time Trump leveled similar accusations against those same prosecutors. In September, when New York AG James filed a lawsuit against Trump, his business, and his adult children for financial fraud, Trump lashed out at her once again. He called her lawsuit another witch hunt by a racist attorney general. And he nicknamed her Attorney General Letitia Peekaboo James, a term that many pointed out sounds similar to a derogatory term used against black people. Earlier this month, Trump referred to Willis as the racist district attorney in Atlanta. There is a clear pattern here. When an investigation into his alleged crimes is advancing and he feels his back is against the wall, Trump calls the black government lawyer in charge of the investigation a racist. He says they are out to get him. He says it will not stop there. Those black government prosecutors are going to come for you, too. So do something. That is a Trump play. And it is one we saw him run this weekend. He announced in an all-caps diatribe that he expected to be arrested in New York today as part of Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's investigation into hush money payments. Trump told his supporters they should protest, take our nation back. And he wrote, we just can't allow this anymore. They're killing our nation as we sit back and watch. Trump followed that up by calling Bragg a Soros racist in reverse. In case his definitions of we and they and Soros racist are not clear enough, Trump released this video yesterday. George Soros funded Democrat Alvin Bragg is known as the worst DA in the country. His soft on crime policies have unleashed violent criminals on innocent citizens and turned New York City into a hellscape of crime, drugs, and chaos. I'm the only thing standing between the American dream and total anarchy, madness, and chaos. And that's what it is. I'm representing you. I'm just here. Always remember, they are coming after me because I am fighting for you. That's what's happening. It is hard to say with certainty what being a Soros-funded racist means in Donald Trump's head, but there are some on the far right who might see this as Trump signaling that the Jewish billionaire philanthropist boogeyman George Soros is somehow out to get them. Whether or not that's what Trump means to say, the danger here lies in how it is being interpreted by his followers. That is the thing to watch. One right-wing broadcaster took Trump's remarks about who is racist and who is a criminal. He took it a step farther yesterday. The criminals in this country, if you want them held accountable, the criminals are Barack Obama, Eric Holder, Susan Rice, military, join us and put all of them up against a concrete wall, just like Ceausescu, and do what we must do to save not just our country, the entire world. That is where we are right now a right-wing media personality calling for the execution of black politicians because Trump might be indicted for alleged crimes. 
We recently learned that on Saturday, Trump will hold his first rally since announcing his impending indictment in Waco, Texas. It will be the 30th anniversary of the armed standoff between federal agents and followers of cult leader David Koresh. For people on the far right, Waco has become a symbol of anti-government, pro-white Christian nationalist sentiment. And again, it is hard to know if Trump knows that, if he's going there because of that or not. But for some of his followers, this decision to hold this rally there will mean something. And they will be listening to everything he says.